Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today we're taking a look at Solus OS. Now, uh, those of you who normally watch my videos and are subscribers are probably wondering why you don't see me in the little webcam view. Well, that's because I can't get the webcam to work with this operating system. Uh, I've tried Cheese, I've tried GUVC Video, uh, um, yeah, just uh, nothing works. GUVC that it wouldn't even open. Cheese. And uh, there we go. Here's what I get with uh, cheese. And uh, you know, I've been, I, I've gone through the uh, um, forums at the community, and uh, you know, tried doing a little diagnosis myself, and really could not find a solution. So uh, uh, we're going without webcam on this one. Uh, you know, I hate to start a review on a on a downer note, but. Uh, that's one thing that I have not been able to get to work on this operating system. But anyway, this is uh, the the Solus project is still a work in progress. This is not uh, you know the final product, so to speak. They're still in heavy development, so uh, you know bugs and whatnot are to be expected. And uh, what I got right here is their homepage uh, opened up on Firefox and I will leave a link down below so that you can go to their homepage, take a look at it and uh, you know go ahead and download it and, and play around with it yourself, see what you think of it. So what is Solus? Solus is an independently developed operating system. Um, it's not you know based on Arch or based on Debian or anything like that you know independently developed uh, and they use the budgie desktop which they themselves have developed and uh, here about in the little section on their their site about budgie it talks a bit about the desktop environment uh, designed with modern user in mind it focuses on simplicity and elegance a uh, huge advantage for the Budgie desktop is not the fork of another project, but one written from scratch with integration in mind. The Budgie desktop tightly integrates with the GNOME stack, employing underlying technologies to offer an alternative desktop and experience in the spirit of open source. The project is compatible with and available for other Linux distributions. So, uh, you know, there are other distros where you will find that you can install Budgie or you know are already coming with Budgie. I just recently did the review of uh, the Manjaro distribution that is running the Budgie desktop. Um, you know it's fairly simple to work with. It uses a traditional desktop layout. Um, fairly light on resources. I'm running about 325 to 350 megabytes of RAM baseline. Um, and like I said, it's a traditional desktop layout that most people, even if you're even if you're new to Solus, even if you're new to Budgie, you're going to be able to figure it out. Um, and as they said, it just kind of gets out of your way, and you know you can open your applications up and get to work. So let's take a look at this desktop layout. By default, we have a single panel across the bottom and you can either click over on the left hand side for your menu or you can use your windows or super key either either way will open the uh, menu up and the menu has a search function so you can just type away and pull items up like that next to the menu we have our tray with all of the uh, open windows and you can select by clicking and you can see by hovering over a particular icon it will show you what that particular thing is over on the right hand side we have our network connections and then next to that is our notifications and then we have a combined um, settings power um, user and uh, and uh, volume control and I like how they wrapped all that into a single uh, a single icon or uh, or icon group I guess you could consider it finally over on the far right hand side we have our time slash calendar if you right click on the panel 
you can pull up your preferences and play around with uh, with your desktop settings. There's not a lot, but I think they got uh, the bulk of the of your basics covered. And from here, you can go and change your theming. Um, this Arc Darker, I think, was probably one of the best looking themes that they have available. Um, there's also this Arc Dark, which is completely dark. Uh, unfortunately, both that and the Arc Darker, I found the readability kind of kind of lacking on on a lot of applications especially LibreOffice you really couldn't read the icons um, you know maybe those of you that have uh, eyesight that's 20 some odd years younger than mine might have a better time um, but at least for me I had trouble with it so the standard arc uh, uh, theme uh, I don't think it's quite as nice looking but the readability was much better at least for me uh, for the icon theme, we've got a couple different themes here. I stuck with this standard Evo Pop theme, but as you can see, they've got a few others available for you. And if you want to change around the layout of the panel, you can do so. You, you can move around your your various uh, applets. Um, and then you've even got some padding options, so you can move around uh, You know how much space is between the individual icons and that sort of thing. If you come here to the menu options, you can either keep or get rid of the menu label on the panel. You can use a compact menu, which is what we have here right now, or you can switch it to their standard menu, which is a category-based menu. And you can also tweak your icon size from here uh, if you're going to use a menu label, what do you want the label? What, yeah, what do you want the label to be? And then uh, finally, we can go to our, our override over. Wow, we just can't talk today. Uh, our overhead panel uh, options. So you don't have to keep the panel on the bottom. You can move it to the top if you like. And if I was going to make this my main desktop, that's where I'd put it, just because that's what I'm used to. Um, or you can go on left or right hand side uh, and then you can go and tweak the size of the panel and do you want the panel to always be visible or do you want it to auto hide you can also go and change your background by right clicking the desktop change background click on the background and see they not a huge number of uh, of images available but uh, there's a fair fair number and uh, just like in the gnome desktop you can go to pictures and you can go and pull up stuff that's in your pictures folder and use that as your background by default you have a very minimal uh, software setup you have the basic utilities that that come with the gnome stack so we've got you know the nautilus file manager we've got uh, gedit we've got um, you know the, the gnome system monitor um, gnome terminal that sort of thing but you really don't have much in the way of application software that's installed by default now they do have their own software center and uh, look wise I re it's a really nice looking software center um, and and very simple to, to work with um, there's not a lot of software available right now um, but I suspect as 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 uh, you know more and more users start start using uh, Solus uh, more development gets done we're going to see more software packages uh, the update manager is integrated into the software manager so you can just click over to updates and do your updates from here now the one issue I've kind of got with this with this kind of setup <clears throat> you'd think okay let's click for updates now and, and you know click the check for updates button and you don't really know if anything's going on it's like okay there's no there's no uh, you know status working or anything like that or checking or you know no nothing that really tells you what's going on at this particular time it just tells you no updates are available at this time well it said that before I clicked the button so is is that just been updated or you know something needs to be done so that you know that 
clicking that button actually worked. But anyway, like I said, um, you know, there's not a lot available in the software right now. I think they've gotten a lot of the important bases covered. Um, you know, we've got LibreOffice. Um, uh, as far as uh, internet browsers, we've got Firefox, we've got uh, Epiphany, and uh, we've got Midori. Unfortunately, there's not any Chromium-based web browsers right now, so if you're a Chrome slash Chromium user, you're kind of out of luck right now unless you want to compile from source. Also, Wine and Play on Linux are not available in the uh, in the Software Center either, nor is Steam. So, you know, we're, we're for a lot of people, those are those are going to be uh, those are going to be uh, distro killers, I guess. Um, but like I said, it's still early days, so um, you know maybe eventually we're going to see those packages in their software center. As far as actually installing software, very easy to do here. Um, just pick a category, or you can use the um, you can use the search and, and search for whatever it is that you're looking for. Select a piece of software. You can go and click on the software title, and it'll tell you a little bit about it. And there's a link to the home page, and you can click install from there, or you know you can just click the plus button from here and you know go through the list pick what it pick whatever it is that you want to that you want to install and you know maybe you got you know a dozen different things that you want to install maybe just one thing whatever it is um, but then just click the apply button it'll tell you the packages that are that are going to be added so you got one last chance to cancel click the install button put in your password and boom you're ready to go and if you notice how fast it does this is one thing I will really give them actually installing packages is lightning fast um, so very very nice on that so problems and issues now I'll start out by saying we are relatively bug free here from the standpoint of a screen yeah, squeezing yeah a freezing screen um, menus that freeze up, applications that freeze up. You know, I mentioned the one issue, which is the the, the webcam, uh, both Cheese and GVC. You know, that was the one application, but pretty much every other application that I opened and used, no problems at all. Um, and you know, no menus freezing or you know, uh, system settings freezing up, that kind of thing. So, you know. We're relatively bug free there and I will tell you that on the on the webcam thing um, there's already been bug reports issued or you know filed so they do know it's a problem and uh, hopefully a resolution will be coming about soon uh, so there was that currently they are still working on AMD slash ATI uh, proprietary drivers on, on integrating those um, your option right now if you've got one of those cards is either going with the open source driver or you need to compile from source um, there's also uh, no printer driver available right now so and this is going to be a game changer for a lot of people because a lot of people need their printers um, it's kind of, you can kind of work around it if you've got a printer that has uh, online access and you can you know print via that route but really uh, you know the printer driver thing I, I would I would make that a very high priority because that's going to be uh, that's that's important for a lot and a lot of people um, one issue I ran into with the, with the desktop and I I don't know if this is intentional or if it's a bug and that is when opening applications it seems to lag a bit and I don't know if it's an animation setting if it's set so that you know it slowly opens um, or there is actually a lag there I am one that uh, on on uh, the uh, on my animations for the desktop I want them to be fast I want them to be quick um, you know, on the GNOME desktop, I always install that um, uh, that 
that uh, extension called impatience that that speeds up the uh, animations uh, I don't like the slow animation so it it could be that you know by default there's it's supposed to be opening slow um, for me a slow opening app is annoying um, so if if this is an animation issue I really wish that they would add some kind of option so that you can speed up the uh, the animations um, because for me the the slowness is enough to keep me from using this as my main desktop uh, ignoring any other issue that lag is annoying enough at least to me um, to, to prevent me from using this as my main desktop um, the one other thing that I've had and this isn't necessarily a soulless problem um, but uh, this is the uh, booting from Grub. Now, the Grub menu that is installed uh, via Solus, it works fine. However, if you've got a, you know, if you're multi booting and you're trying to boot from another Grub menu, um, I found that uh, the the uh, the other grub bootloader it identifies Solus, but will not boot it. Get a panic attack every uh, or a kernel panic attack every time you try to boot. Um, I've got Arch on my main desktop, and I try after updating the uh, the grub menu from Arch, tried booting from there, wouldn't happen. On my laptop, I've got uh, uh, Ubuntu GNOME 15.10 and uh, ran into essentially the same situation uh, so really you're left with either manually configuring that that grub menu or you need to stick with the um, the solace uh, uh, grub menu that's generated uh, either route will work but uh, it is kind of annoying and like I said that's not necessarily um, a solace problem it's how all of the other um, uh, uh, grub menus are identifying solace. Um, but I mean that's about it and really considering that this project is still in development those are pretty minor issues. Um, they still got a fair amount of work to be done um, but uh, you know the project is looking good. Um, you know I kind of want to hold off on a final judgment of, of Solus as a whole until after they get done with the development and you know we're to a you know to a real release to you know version number one I guess you could say and uh, on that note I think that about finishes up this review hope you've enjoyed it give us a big old thumbs up if you liked it and uh, as always, leave comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below. I will try to get to those as soon as possible. And as always, thanks for watching and see you on the next video.